Hey there, everybody. This is Amazing Fantasy Football. I am Josh, and that guy over there is... And I am Chris. Chris, he always is. How you doing tonight, Chris? I'm doing fantastic. We're off to Excellent. another week, uh, week two of NFL. Excited about the matchups. Excited about live. Let's get it. Right on, man. Right on. Um, we're Amazing Fantasy Football. We're here. To, we're doing matchups this week. We got a little cause for concern segment here close to the top. We're going to start off with some injury news. Um, as always, you if you're watching us on YouTube, you can check us out on podcast format wherever podcasts are distributed. If you and you know and just flip it around for podcast to YouTube. Yada yada. If you don't know what YouTube is, I suggest you crawl up from underneath that rock and see the sun. <laughs> Good way to put it. What? Um, I'm doing all right today, Chris. Thanks for asking. I'm doing. Cr- um, I'm so horrible about that. <laughs> I think I'm just focused now. I'm just kidding. I know uh, it's, it's fine. I, well, because well, we also talk off air and then I'm like, I already got the update. No, I, it, a lot of work this week, right? It, it's much. good. It's good. I, I'm good, man. <laughs> um, what, why don't you kick us off with some injury news? Well, um, some players got injured over the weekend as it, it, it happens yeah. in, in real life, you know? Yeah. So yeah. Uh, why don't you kick us off, man? Let's go with Jerry Judy first. Uh, Jerry, Jerry Judy, the second year wide out. Where is your injury, sir? Is expected to miss four to six weeks after suffering a right high ankle sprain. We all know that uh, dreaded high ankle sprain. Um, so, you know, adjust your lineups accordingly. Uh, a lot of hype around him in terms of route runner, but he is done for some time. What else do we have here? Brian Fitzpatrick being placed on injured reserve today. We did a little quick looking into this. Uh, it can be as little as three weeks uh, or... I guess indefinitely is the term to put it, mm-hmm. but IR for Mr. Fitzpatrick. Last I read, they want to stick with Heineke. Um, I don't know. He didn't look all that great, but he didn't look bad either. Raheem Mostert, uh, more of the same story with him, unfortunately. Uh, at first, we were looking at, uh, I don't know, they weren't even sure. It was like a several weeks type of thing, and then he came out on Twitter, and then the team later confirmed that he's done for the year. So uh, mm-hmm. uh, I even... I even read a little bit into it personally. He had posted on Twitter and he, he said he had to stay away from social media for a bit, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, you know, you know th- good luck for him, but I'm sure he's feeling the pressure of uh, just can't seem to stay out there, you know? Um, yep. Demarcus Lawrence on the defensive side of the ball. We've got with a broken fifth metatarsal. I don't have a time frame, but that's going to uh, impact some matchups. Yeah, there you go. The pinky toe. <laughs> that's, that's right here. Quote, pinky toe. Um, so that'll, of course, affect some matchups. That'll come up later. Um, onward and upward. I've got some other kind of non-injury related. Did I mention Gallup? My apologies. Gallup out three to five weeks with a calf strain. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jameson Crowder was activated. Uh, mm-hmm. We already mentioned Lawrence. Devontae Freeman came up from the practice squad to the active roster. Just worth mentioning. Yawn. Yeah, that's kind, of, that's kind of the why I closed with that. That's kind of where I'm at with the news. That's all I've got. Back to you, the Josh. The to Freeman. <laughs> uh, but hey, you know, murky situations, huh? Mm, yeah, I guess. Um, let's uh, let's do a little cause for concern. Let's do it. Let's These are some it. players that after week one, um, most of them had a bit of a dud week, but some of them maybe had a good week. And there isn't a cause for concern. I'm going to kind of twist it up on Chris a little bit. Oh, wow. um, let's start with Aaron Rodgers here. He was the quarterback 34 on the week, according to Fantasy Pros, which is where I did all my stuff from. Um, are, do you, is that a cause for concern for you, Chris? Not at all. Uh, I think both hmm. he and Devontae Adams had some, quote, time off in their respective uh, team argument situations and once they got the financial stuff worked out although i think Devonte adams still needs his contract but anyway uh point is i don't think they were meshed well together at the beginning of the offseason at all so i think it'll come okay. around in the next couple of weeks um on to matt ryan how do you oh sorry um i'm a little i'm a little concerned about aaron Rodgers. that okay um mainly 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 because of offensive line. Yeah, he looked out of sync. Uh how concerned are you in the whole entire Falcons offense, I guess? Let's start with Matt Ryan though. I'm a little concerned. Uh I think a lot Me of too. folks felt that they kind of took a move for the future and maybe the rebuild is starting before our eyes and Matt Ryan didn't sign up for that. Josh Allen. Not concerned at all. Quarterback for the Buffalo Bills. What? Not 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 concerned at all. 
I am a little bit. He didn't look good. He was very inaccurate, and I'm wondering if I was right about that. Is this a one-year wonder in that that spike of accuracy? Mm-hmm. Um, let's move on to. Sorry, I was gonna I was gonna link um, Matt Ryan and Kyle Pitts. Are you worried about Kyle Pitts at all? Um, going back to the Matt Ryan concern, yeah, I'm a little concerned for the offenses overall. I think Ridley will end up being fine. Maybe it'll be more like a low end one, but I think uh, a little concern for the offense. Kyle Pitts for me. None. I'm not concerned whatsoever because this is exactly what I expected. 68% uh, off of uh, uh, the Falcons offensive snaps. Mm-hmm. Just about right for a rookie tight end. Let's move on to Zeke. Are you a little concerned about Zeke? I think we covered this on the Sunday stream. Um, you know, zero percent concerned uh buy low if somebody wants to sell them oh okay i'm just a little bit just just a little what about javonta williams running back for the denver broncos i mean i guess i'm a little concerned because i was kind of already coming into the season with him and gordon and it was a very even share as best i could see in my research um it was yep some uh it was let's let's see what's if he has a good week next week I'm. I'll be. I will be. Yeah, I'm definitely holding out hope, but I'd have to honestly answer a little concerned. Yeah. Najee Harris, uh, Pittsburgh Steelers, will be running back. Uh, well, a little concerned. A little concerned because Me offensive too. line. And that's what I have written down is that I'm concerned that I was right about that offensive line and mm-hmm. that it has not been fixed. Ditto. Uh, James Robinson, uh, running back out of Jacksonville. A little concerned. A little concerned. Usage was a little all over the place. And just overall as an organization, I worry about Urban Meyer, et cetera. I am a lot concerned about James Robinson. Yeah. Not only did Carlos Hyde get a meaningful amount of snaps in that game, but he also outscored, barely, but he did outscore James Robinson in that game against the Houston Texans. What about Derrick Henry here? He had, he scored like, um I'm just pulling this number out of the top of my head. It's like 7.8 fantasy points. I'm going to say a little concern for the Titans offense oh. and Derrick Henry. I'm going with none here because okay. he, I, and I looked at last year's uh, points at like week by week points that he scored. And he did this four mm-hmm. times last year Started where he had slow. like eight or eight or less fantasy points in a week, four times. So he's going to give you some duds, but mainly just because of the, 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 the opponent and the game plan and et cetera. Yeah. What about okay. Zach Moss? Oh yeah. A lot of concern. Absolutely. A lot. A lot. Well, let's move on to Justin Jefferson. Are you concerned about him at all? Not at all. Not me neither. Robert Woods. Robert Woods did score a touchdown, but he only but he was only targeted four times and caught three of those targets. I think he'll be fine. I'm not concerned. I'm a little. Um, Woods was on the field for only 77% of the snaps versus Cups 94%, which Van Jefferson from scored. what everyone was kind of saying preseason was like, you know, Robert Woods, you know, was he's he's the whiteout and cups more of the slot, you know, that sort of thing. Um just a little for Robert Woods, but not a lot, like a very minuscule amount. Mm-hmm. On to Brandon Ayuk. Brandon Ayuk, wide receiver for the 49ers. I mean, we go on about uh, I'm I'm a little concerned because we go on into off season about coach speak. Well, this is coach speak in the regular season now, and what last thing I heard wasn't very glowing review. He says he Mm-mm. just needs to play better. We'll get into that yeah, we'll get into that later. Thank you. We'll get into that more in the matchup. I am like drop Brandon Ayuk level of okay. concern. So a lot concerned. Nuke him okay. off of your team. Um, the the fact that someone named Trent Sherfield is getting is is splitting and getting a slightly more uh, usage than Ayuk concerning. What about Stefan Diggs? Uh, similar to Josh Allen, zero concern. I think I think yeah, the Steelers too. defense is elite level, so I think they had a great scheme. Yep. And in fact that'll come up later in the matchups. Kenny G. Gosh, I don't feel like I know what he did. Uh a little concerned because I was look because I was a little concerned coming into the season, to be honest with you. I'm a l- I'm a little concerned. Um did you have any that I did not mention? How about uh Adam Troutman? I know you're oh, Trout Man. Um, Trout Man, am- Adam Trout Man. I think I'm the exact opposite of concerned about Trout Man. Zero concern, right? I am zero. I, I am in negative amount of concern for Trout Man. I, I'm a I look concerned. at his snap percentages. He was right. he was like a top ten level of amount of snaps for tight ends. Yeah, um, Jawan Johnson got those touchdowns, but Johnson was on the field for like next to nothing. So I'm pretty sure Troutman was thing. like second behind only Waller. I don't remember his snap percent or what the 
statistic was. But yeah, it might have been, been total snaps. As a guy who is touted Troutman, as a guy who has uh, manages him in Dynasty, as a guy who has a ice cream bet going for him, uh, I'm a little concerned because if he's not going to get the red zone looks, yeah, I mean, I'd like to see better volume between the 20s, and but we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Um, but that's all I got. What's your first matchup, Chris? My first matchup is Pats at Jets. That would be the New England Patriots at the New York Jets. Let's talk a little bit about Mac Jones here. I uh, went 29-39, 281 yards, one touchdown in his debut. Looked very poised. Uh, really a nice debut in like IRL, like in real NFL terms. Um, looking forward to seeing him play some more. But, uh, you know, we're talking fantasy here. And it wasn't anything spectacular. Uh, they're trying to win games with defense uh, and really what kind of looks like a three-man running back rotation. We'll get into that in a second. Um, so I just have a wait-and-see kind of bench grade on Mac Jones. Mm-hmm. Uh, cautious, uh, cautiously optimistic, though. Let's get into Damien Harris, what we care about a little bit more here. He had a Real late quick. fumble. Yes, go ahead. I'm sorry, and you're about to say this, but I just wanted to, I just wanted the listeners, audience, whatever, to get my cause for concern on Damien Harris. I forgot to put him in. Oh, okay. you forgot to put him in. Let's 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 uh, get it. Let's dig deep on that cause for concern right here. Uh, so he had a late fumble that literally like cost them the game. Uh, mm-hmm. The Pats running back coach was not happy. Um, I watched a video of him. Uh, you know, camera's like right where it is for me, so it was like you could see all his facial expressions. Not good. He was sitting uh, in your basement. Well, no, it's just <laughs> right on my desk in front of me, <laughs> behind my monitor. No. Um, so it was one of those mobile, uh, mobile, one of those remote interviews. So it just kind of had a nice camera just squared right up to his face. And you could see the facial expressions and the disappointment, to be honest with you. And we all know that Bill Belichick is not one to give you a long leash with that type of he thing. He punish running backs. Ironically, Ramondre Stevenson also fumbled. Um, let's get down to Ooh. some snap percentages here. Uh, Damian Harris played 40 of 75 snaps. That's 53%. James White, of course, we know he's going to be involved. 28 of 75 snaps, giving you 37%. Ramondre Stevenson, a measly 5 of 75 snaps, etc. Um, I mean, if you want a desperate start f- flex for James White, like in a full PPR, sure, I'll throw two and a half stars his way. But I'm going to be a little more... Uh, cautious with Damian Harris I'm going to give him 2.75 stars which puts him still on the cusp of a flex but not really what we were hoping with with an RB2 you know um, and that 53% scares me onward to the pass catchers you know can, not can a I, lot of absolutely Sorry, I have some level of concern for Damian Harris I did kind of gloss over that I think I would have uh, by my Analysis, a lot of I what from what, like his snap percentages is fine because they probably they were they were down at one point so they probably didn't they weren't rolling out a ton of running backs out there. I mean, you add all those snap percentages up, that's not a hundred percent, folks. Nor does it overlap de- get anywhere close to a hundred percent. So well, that's the problem. Yeah, I mean, it, it's funny when you talk about our, it. Seems like an arbitrary number at fifty three. Like, what are you happy with? Well, I don't know. I think I'd be a little happy with sixty five plus. You know, like I didn't have unbelievable expectations of Dame Harris, but I did invest a, I don't know, sixth round picking him, whatever it was. Anyway, I'm excuse me, a, a little bit. I want to see more of what Bill, for sure. uh, what Bill Check is going to say moving forward, going into Sunday for me to, mm-hmm. and we'll see what happens this week. We'll revisit him next week and see. For, I'm sorry, I'm will. sorry, I interrupted and just keep going. Uh, Nelson Aguilar slash Jacoby Myers. Uh, Myers led with nine targets, seven for Aguilar. Uh, get this, Myers played 99% of snaps. That's 74 out of 75 snaps. Really? Aguilar, 85%. Still respectable. Uh, Aguilar good. gets gets the one score, so you know we're not really banking on that by a week to week basis. Uh, this was the Jets. You know, after one week, they're uh, kind of middle of the road and like almost statistically with run and pass. Uh, we'll just leave it at that. Uh, same thing goes with fantasy. They're just kind of middle of the road uh, in terms of fantasy points given up to both running backs and receivers. Uh, solid. I'll give Jacoby uh, Myers a solid flex worthy three stars. Uh, and I'm going to go and bench Aguilar. Just, I think this deep team is trying to win with a, amalgamation of running backs and, and what, what's a good defense. Uh, if not, maybe, maybe real good. Uh, onto the tight ends. Uh, John who fumbled also. Uh, he also had one carry for whatever that's worth. Other than that, the snap percentage was actually kind of positive for both of them in terms of 55 for uh, John who, 54 for Hunter Henry. That's 73 and 72%. Uh, five oh. targets for John who, three for Henry. I just, 
honestly, I just want no part of this tied into Quagmire until until something works itself out, and I'm not sure that it will. So I'm just going to bench them both. Uh, what do I got here? Who are they playing? The Jets and Mr. Zach Wilson. Uh, you know, I I thought he looked decent for a little bit, um, but uh, you know, just kind of a underwhelming score. Uh, you know, not to mention as uh, just a tough matchup for him. So I'm going to bench Zach Wilson this week, uh, but I'll keep my eye on him. I, I still have some hopes for this offense, but in terms of fantasy running backs or who to pick, man, I, it, it's just, it's a mess. Uh, they lost, uh, this is important to mention. They lost Mackay Becton for six to eight weeks. He dislocated his kneecap versus the Panthers last week. He was, I mean, it must've been first round. I think they might've had multiple first rounds. Forgive me. I don't remember, but uh, he was a high pick, huge dude, man. Just like six, eight, three fifty, like, just a, it was a, a first a, round pick last year. Oh, last year. year. Good call. Thank you, sir. Um, so, you know, he's, a, he's all for all intents and purposes, a stud and they're losing him. So this is going to mean something for this offense moving forward, which will, we'll go on here, uh, to give him some ratings. Uh, they did pick up a uh, Morgan Moses, uh, in the off season, apparently a veteran tackle. He's a starting level tackle. So that's at least okay if you want to put it that way uh let's go on to talk about some snaps here ty johnson led with 35 out of 65 snaps ironically 54 percent yeah just like whatever man and coleman 17 of 65 snaps i think he ended up with like nine carries and michael carter is just a wait and see if not a bench if not we'll see about two weeks from now if he's a cut but uh yeah that worries me a little bit uh, with michael carter speaking of uh calls for concern just not, just not enough volume there. Not a clear-cut guy. Plus, New England is better defense than the Panthers is. I'm just going to bench them all. I, that sounds kind of like throwing my hands up with the Jets. But uh, here, here, here's some positivity, I think. Did I give him a starting rating? Anyway, Corey Davis. Well, well. Uh, Mr. Josh was pretty high on Corey Davis. Uh, how often do you think, though, that Corey Davis is going to catch two touchdowns? But Every week. Every single week, wide receiver, <laughs> the wide receiver one I'm of all time. I'm writing something down. <laughs> I got you. I, I'm glad you were well enough. Um, uh, but he did play 58 of 65 snaps. That's 89. percent We like that very much. Uh, he led in receiving yards with 97. We love that. Uh, I can understand the hype, and I think he's worth a pickup. Uh, Pats just gave up 185 passing yards though, and 74 rushing yards. So had a pretty good week. Uh, but I'm benching uh, the Jets wideouts versus the Pats. I'm on the fence with Corey Davis. Uh, I think you have to still keep him in flex. Uh, I don't want to say ride the wave because it's only one week, but I hate to get caught chasing touchdowns, so I'll give him a respectable 2.75 stars to keep him in the flex conversation. Corey Davis, bench the rest Seems of them. Bench, yeah, exactly. Bench the rest of them. No tight ends to note. And that is your Pats at Jets for week two. All right, let's move on to the Denver Broncos at the Jacksonville Jaguars. Let's start with the Denver's the Broncos quarterback Teddy Bridgewater. Last week, the Jags just let Tyrod Taylor throw for 291 yards, two touchdowns, and complete 66 percent of his mm. passes. Tyrod Taylor. If it were a more talented running back, or I'm sorry, quarterback, I would give him a higher rating. But I'm going to go three and a half stars for Teddy B. On to Melvin Gordon here. Gordon did have a seventy run, uh, seventy yard touchdown run last week, and he looked like he looked like he had some some speed on that run, and he, and he did exhibit some good vision, as you constantly can see from the illegitimate father of Chris's firstborn, Melvin Gordon. Um, but did you know outside of that seventy yard touchdown run that <laughs> Melvin Gordon averaged a Melvin Gordon special, and that's a Melvin Gordon special is three point one yards per attempt. Ooh. Didn't know Melvin that, Gordon actually. special right there. Didn't know that. I am I'm going on on to Javante Williams. Sorry, I'm giving him 2.75 stars because him and Javante Williams, they actually split very evenly as far as usage. Oh, we have, or, was, um, mm-hmm. as as far as workload. There was no clarity for sure, yeah. Right. I'm going back to the well on on Javante Williams until Melvin Gordon can um actually establish that he's better and gets a more substantial workload than Javante Williams. So and and I think I still think Javante Williams is more talented, you know. I like I like to call him a young Melvin Gordon. Um, d- did it not show last week? No, but the Jags mm. allowed the Texans washed up runners to uh, to you know amount to 120 yards combined and two touchdowns combined. So 
you know, split that in half. That's one touchdown and, you know, six yards. That's usable. I'm going to give them, I have three and a half stars right now. I'm going to go actually up it down to three and a quarter stars, three and a quarter stars for Joante Williams. Excuse me. Just because um, uh, not a lot of clarity coming out of that situation. And it is the Jags that they're going up against on the Cortland Sutton, as we mentioned at the top that Jerry Judy is out for what, what did we say? Four to six weeks with a sprain, a high ankle sprain. So I'm going to, I'm going to move along to Cortland Sutton and I'm going to give him three and three quarter stars. Uh, He should be the biggest benefactor of Judy being injured. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater has only thrown two touchdowns in something like two or three games in his career. But, but one of those two or three games was last week. I like him to do it again this week too. Tim Patrick, maybe your waiver wire uh, pickup. He was pretty good at, at times last season. Um, in case, but in case you've never heard of him, Patrick is a six point uh, six point, a six foot four receiver with some okay speed. Um, last season with lesser quarterbacks than Teddy Bridgewater, Patrick, and averaged nine point one fantasy points per game. Not bad. He um, he did have more than four games. Uh, over 12 points so there's some upside to this guy and especially again in a bad matchup sure. i'm gonna give three stars to patrick on to the tight end no offense go hawks three and three quarter stars teddy is probably never going to reduce an explosive day for any of his pass catchers but fant is a darn good young tight end with plenty of potential even with the ho-hum teddy bridgewater at quarterback he last week he did catch um, six of his eight targets for 62 yards. That's not that bad, especially for a tight end. That's 9.2 points if, you know, in um, half PPR leagues, like we like to score, like use our scoring system for. Yep. I like him to get similar uses all season long, and which is kind of on par with where he would have been last year if he wouldn't have been, you know, so banged up. Let's move along to the Jacksonville Jaguars, you know, and maybe throw a touchdown in there too for Noah Fant. You know, like now you're sitting on a real a solid fantasy day there. Um, let's move along right. to Trevor Lawrence. 14.5. Do you know what 14.5 is for Trevor Lawrence, Chris? Is that how many fantasy points he scored? That was his total QBR last week. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. That not is good. not a very good NFL regular season nope. debut. It's going to be an think, even tougher matchup this week against the Denver NFL Broncos team. defense. Yeah. So I'm giving him one star. Like even in my two quarterback, like I personally have him on on my fantasy roster for the, our super flex slash two quarterback league. I am Bye. benching him this week for <clears throat> Tua. Yep. On to. Yep. Onto the running backs here. I'm giving James Robinson three stars. It was a super disappointing last week, pretty much for the entire Jags offense. Chark had some good numbers, but we'll get into that in a second. Talking about Robinson here. I'm going to chalk it up to that the Jags getting down early, so they didn't want to risk Robinson getting injured, so they rolled out Carlos Hyde instead. Statistically, Hyde was more effective, but he's Carlos Hyde, so I'm not going to look for that to continue. We all know that Carlos Hyde is not very talented, folks. I mean, Chris might be a better running back than Carlos Hyde. On a DJ Chark, I'm also giving him three stars. He had 12 targets last week. 12! 12, 12 targets! You know how many of those he caught? Three. Oh, Lord. I'm going to chalk that up to Trevor Lawrence in his uh, week one jitters here. But those th- with those three receptions, though, he did have 86 yards and a touchdown, so not a bad outing for Chark uh, when it's okay. all said and done. Um, if Chark is going to get targeted that much, sign me up. Trevor Larry should improve as the season goes along. That is a terrible nickname. I will never mention that ever again. What? On to Marvin Jones, who also had a pretty decent week last week, I guess. He, he was targeted both... Him and LaVisca Chenault were both targeted nine times, but Trevor Lawrence threw the ball 51 times as they got down real early, mainly by Lawrence's own doing. So I'm going to give Marvin Jones one stars. I'm going to go a very desperate LaVisca Chenault two stars here if you're super desperate. He caught seven of his nine targets. So, you know, and they, who cares about the, the Jags tight ends? They got no one. Um, that, that's that one, man. What, what's your next matchup? Moving right along, Chris definitely wasn't scrolling down for some reason. <laughs> Were you going to do the, the, the first matchup over again? Because that would have no, been kind of great. I would have maybe let you get about a third of the way through. 
I just need to realign here. I'm sorry. I've got the Bills at the Dolphins. We were talking a little Josh Allen early in the show. Let's get down the nitty gritty here. Uh, could be a low scoring division affair uh, versus the Dolphins. Their defense seems better than okay. respectable. Uh, Dolphins just won a one point low scoring game versus the Pats, as we mentioned. Uh, Bills only scored 16. Now, I think the Steelers D played an exceptional. Uh, game and they confused Allen by dropping into coverage and uh, getting pressure with their front four. Uh, Vegas gives them a 47 and a half point over under. The Dolphins are three and a half point underdogs. Uh, 17.2 fantasy points uh, by Allen last week. Only 58.8 percent completion. One touchdown. Fumbled. Fumbled twice, lost one of them. Uh, we didn't mention that in the concern, cause for concern segment. Uh, I think we'll see a bounce back game here. Nothing spectacular versus the Dolphins, though, because I do have a bit of respect for their defense. So I'm going to call them a low end quarterback one and give them 3.75 stars. But I think some of that statistical breakdown gives you kind of some of the concern Josh is talking about at the beginning of the show. I did bake that in with my 3.75 mm -hmm. stars, but uh, given my outlook on him and Diggs, uh, I'm going to with uh, optimism here. Devin Singletary, I mean, what can I say? Not much volume, a lackluster performance. Isaiah McKenzie is even getting running back snaps. Dolphins gave up 125 rushing yards last week. That was 13th most. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and bench Singletary. I just, I, I know there's teams out there that have to make that choice, and I'm just going to make it. If they're listening to me, I'm going to make it for them and just steer clear if you can. I'm not saying cut them, but let's see. Uh, we touched on Zach Moss at the beginning of the show. Bench rating for him. Let's just see what happens in the next couple of weeks. On to Stefan Diggs. Uh, remember, uh, I said, his name is Stefan too, isn't it? Stefan Gilmore uh, is out uh, on pup up to six weeks uh, to go or whatever. Uh, despite the non quarterback one performance by Allen, dig snag nine of 13 targets for a not so nice 69 yards and zero touchdowns. I think Diggs, Diggs is the beneficiary of the okay bounce back game from Allen here. And he hauls in a score. Maybe, maybe two <laughs> should be a high end wide receiver two. I'll give him three and a half stars. Um, Gabe Davis gave caught uh, the one the lone Allen uh, touchdown throw there, uh, but Emmanuel Sanders played a ton of snaps, the most actually out of the receivers, seventy nine out of eighty five snaps. That's ninety three percent. Gabe Davis only played forty three out of eighty five, fifty one percent of snaps. Not that we didn't realize that Davis, you know, we, it's not that we thought he was a one or a two necessarily. We knew he was a role player. Davis did catch a red zone touchdown. Um, right before uh, the halftime uh, there's like 20 seconds left and he caught a red zone target for a touchdown and he got a big play to get him down there so uh a little bit of both there a little bit of optimism a little bit of uh worried about sanders playing so gosh darn much um so he kind of did what we expect i guess or at least what i expect i know you're a little higher on him uh but the matchup and emmanuel sanders involvement scares me a little bit so i'm gonna bench him this week uh but too early to panic just yet uh we did see some positive signs there uh I don't touch on any other pass catchers for the Bills because I'm going to steer clear of them. There aren't any. Yeah, for the most part. Uh, Beasley's stats were okay, but just, again, Sanders is very involved, and Diggs is, yeah, their volume's kind of low right now, so we'll see. Uh, let's see. Tua went 16 of 29. Uh, I'm just not that impressed. Uh, I understand he's got to be in the conversation. It's super flex. Um, but, you know, I'm not loving this matchup. That Steelers-Bills game from last week, Bills defense looked pretty darn good, too. Uh, we'll get into that here in a second with some of the others. Okay. Positional skill uh, posi skill position breakdowns. I'm going to bench Tua in uh, hmm. single quarterback leagues if I can help it. Gaskin. Oh, man. Bills rush defense, despite placing 10th in terms of rushing yards, given up. 10th best, that is. It was actually a little... I'm sorry... Yeah, 10th best. Uh, it was actually a little better than that, uh, considering 25 of, the yards, of those yards came up from a wide receiver uh, end around with Claypool uh, on the Steelers. So they gave And they gave up the fewest fantasy points to running backs. So it was one week, folks. I get it. It's just one week. Uh, but they did give up the fewest fantasy points to running backs and uh, pretty good uh, in terms of rushing yards given up. Gaskin was his usual mediocre self in week one. He got nine rushes for 49 on the ground, uh, but he did have a decent day pass catching uh, with five uh, catching all five of his targets for 27 yards. Nothing great, but, you know, half point PPR, full point PPR. He was a clear one for his team, uh, but only nine out of the 23 carries. Uh, so uh, 
Ahmed and Malcolm Brown both got five apiece in terms of carries. Uh, Gaskin played 29 out of 52 snaps for 54%. So that's kind of what I'm getting at with. He was the clear number one, but how it's like, it's like Henderson. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Henderson with the Patriots. It's just a similar snap percent. Just cause for concern. There. Thank you. I knew I did it again. I could see the DH in my brain and I said, I'm going to say it wrong. And I did. Um, so, you know, it looks kind of like, kind of like a committee to me, folks. Uh, I just don't think we're looking at an RB two here in Gaskin this week and, potentially moving forward. So he's just a flex RB3 for me, albeit a high-end one with 3.25 stars. Uh, bench the other two running backs, obviously. Hey, Will Fuller's back for the receivers here. Maybe we see some emphasis uh, to be a bit more aggressive with Fuller being back. Bills gave up uh, only 177 passing yards last week. Uh, so, again, oh, okay. Bills are pretty good defense uh, and greatly uh, frustrated Najee Harris in the process. So, you know, go bakes into the running back and receiver uh, analysis there. Yeah, maybe Ben just isn't that good and the Steelers O-line is horrible. That's that's a fair angle to take, but I think Tua struggles and the Dolphins try and keep it close by running the ball and playing defense. So I'm just, I mean, I guess if you drafted Fuller, you might want to flex him. Two and a half stars for Fuller. Uh, bench Devontae Parker, bench Waddle for similar reasons. Uh, we didn't oh. mention Gise- we didn't mention Gasecki causing concern. I mean, Waddle had a fine rookie debut at like IRL, like as a rookie receiver in the real life NFL. But they're just they're playing conservative right now. I'm concerned about Tua running around a little too much or what have you. Gasecki, uh, we didn't mention him in cause for concern. Uh, I didn't really he like how me. he. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> didn't really like how he played. He freaking uh, big- goosed me. Big old donut there for you. Um, but so I would like to kind of ride the fence here and put them on the outside of the top 12 tight ends for the week and just call them a dart throw with two stars. You know, um, I, I, you know, I had him in one league and I dumped him for Cole Komet. And I was going to say just, it, it was mainly ahead. just because I'm like, dude, I can't, I can't have go another week of you goosing me or getting such low points. And this is exactly, I think, what with. I'm sorry. Exactly what we I was kind of worried about with with Gusecki is I love the talent, but there's just a lot around him, and it was a very conservative game plan for the for the Dolphins, and a lot of that is just because yeah, their fifty two snaps is not good. Yeah, fifty two snaps. There's just not a lot of volume there. I mean, I'm concerned about Gusecki a little bit, uh, and yeah, I go uh, Matt will come up later in our matchup show. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Back to you, Josh. Ooh, that was that was it. Me. I, yeah, I got like the Forty Niners at the at the. I got the 49ers at the Eagles. So let's start with a 49ers quarterback here, Jimmy Garoppolo. Jimmy GM gave him three and a half stars. Last week he ended up with a passer rating of 124.2. And that's out of what, 158.3, right? Is is that what a perfect QB quarterback ra- rating is? Yes, QB as far as QB rating, yeah. And then 150s, 154, something like that, yeah. No, it's like one fifty eight sure. something. I don't know, it's sports math, I think, folks. It I think Steve Young did it one sense. time. I think Steve Young did it one time. There's been a couple Rogers. of quarterbacks that mm-hmm. so there's I think only one quarterback's done it for a game. Anyways, um that was all against the Detroit Lions. They suck. And plain and simple, <laughs> yeah. Jeff Okuda, their back is apparently has injured his Achilles. They're gonna be even freaking mm. worse going forward. And but that we're not talking about the Detroit Lions defense, we're talking about Jimmy Garoppolo here. The Eagles passing D just gave up 164 yards to Matt Ryan and the Falcons. 164. Jimmy G's quarterback rating from week one was almost that high. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it would appear that the Eagles are trying to improve upon their middling past defense. So if from 2020, I just I'm gonna give Jimmy G three and a half stars. I would say he was on my super flex team, I'd probably be starting him over Tua. Oh yeah. Just to get just put uh things into context. Mm-hmm. Raheem Mostert, you're he's out for the season with his knee injury. So the rookie Elijah Mitchell, not Trey Sermon. Trey Sermon was a healthy scratch apparently for with the week one game. And Elijah Mitchell came in. He only played in, I believe it was like sixty four percent of the snaps. Um let me go and look at that real quick. Eliza Mitchell, he yep, I, wow, I nailed that. Sixty four percent. Played in only 64% of the snaps, but that also could have just been because Raheem Mostert did start and get some snaps already. He didn't just like come out and just like, oh, my I think knee. it was two. I think it was two. Oh, it was only two? Anyways. It might have been more than two snaps. It was two carries. My apologies. Go ahead. So Elijah Mitchell last week, 
Um, he he got um, 64%, and I just looked it up. It is actually 64%. Literally, spot on the nose, 64%. You know, that that was last week. We're looking at this week now. Trey Sermon is going to be in the mix. I can't see that he's going to be he's a healthy be scratch active. two weeks in a yeah, row, it's right? Be active. Yeah, he's it's just given the roast, most roots out, he's got to be active. I but think. given that the Elijah Mitchell had um, a pretty – Pretty good, you know, debut and, and you know, getting the getting the spot work, you know, and at the last mo- moment, you know, um, we're, we're in 2021 now. But last season, the Eagles were the 10th worst rushing defense by yards mm. allowed per game. But and last week against the Falcons, they were able to cobble together 116 yards from their lackluster running back core. That was the the Eagles. That is um, the only reason I don't have Mitchell rated higher than his three and three quarter. Um, reading is because of Shanahanigans and the, the Shanahanigans he likes to pull with his running backs. I mean, it could easily just be, I mean, it could be a Jamichael hasty game, which is actually the guy who I when thought I was going to get more work when, when um, I think it was hasty on third down catching passes. Go ahead. Okay. Let's move on to Debo Samuel. Last week, Debo Samuel was the third highest scoring wide receiver with 27.4 points. That was against the lions. Like I said, Jeff Okuda injured, his Achilles, apparently. Um, this week is going to be a lot tougher matchup against the Eagles. You know, granted that they've gotten a little bit better from last year, but the, they did. The Eagles did hold Calvin Ridley to only 51 scoreless yards. So I'm going to err on the side of caution and give Debo three and three quarter stars. Um, Brandon Ayuk, I didn't even get a target last week. We kind of talked about this top and caused for concern. We both mm-hmm. said I'm I'm very concerned about him. He. Played in only twenty six percent of the snaps, which was like I like I said, it was like fifty or I'm sorry, forty seven percent of the yards. And this is from a guy who averaged almost seventy receiving yards per game last year. It's very puzzling. I'm wondering if there is a bit of a maturity issue going on with Ayuk for some reason. I don't mm-hmm. know. Something from last year is not connecting to this year. Let's move on to George Kittle. Go Hawks again. Um, if you see a pattern in these and this and these uh, this show is that there's a lot of Hawkeye tight ends in the NFL. Go Hawks! That's the reason they're called Tight End University. Yep. In a game where the 49ers got up big and and early, Kittle only saw f- five targets last week. I look for Kittle to get an uptick this week, and and I'm taking fantasy points too. So I'm giving four and a quarter stars just in case it happens again and he doesn't get a lot of usage. But I don't think that's going to happen. Let's move on to Jalen Hurts here, the quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles. I'm giving him four stars. The guy looked pretty good last week against the Falcons defense that was more or less just throwing out cardboard cutouts on the field. Mm -hmm. Um, Chris and I were not on Hurts, mainly because of his accuracy and his wide receiving core. Well, Hurts completed 77.1% of his passes, and that subset, that that, that suspect wide receiving core, Devonta Smith and Jalen Rager, both had six receptions, and both of them had a touchdown. The Niners allowed Goff to rack up 30, 338 garbage passing yards. So, you know, maybe Hertz has a chance. I'm giving him four stars because he always has that rushing ability too. And, and I mean, we could easily be sleep, still sleeping on Jalen Hurts. Let's see. That right. rushing ability. Yeah, I'm a little concerned that I was. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, me as well. Miles Sanders, the numbers to think about with Miles Sanders is 93 and 121. That is a number of rushing and receiving yards that the 49ers gave up to a combination of DeAndre Swift and Jamal Williams. That is 93 rushing yards and 121 receiving yards to those two guys. Sanders only split duties with Kenneth Gainwell, um, rookie running back out of, what was it, Memphis, right, Chris? Yep. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, but Sanders was the more effective runner on the ground, so I'm giving him a four star rating here. I'm still not, don't even consider Kenneth Gainwell. If you want to pick him up as, a, as like a Sunday morning ad to handcuff Miles Sanders, go for it. Other than that, don't worry about him. Devonta Smith, I'm giving him three and a three and a three and a three and a three and a, three and a, three and a, three and a half stars. The, the, you probably didn't draft him, but if you scooped him up at free agency, I think he's st- like this past week, I think he's yeah. startable especially in bigger leagues. He led the team with eight targets last week and will probably do so again this week. Jalen Rager, I'm giving you one star because you got to do it again for me to start believing, buddy. Fair. Dallas Goddard, three and a half stars. Goddard was on the field for 73 of the team's offensive snaps. Ertz, only 58. Goddard caught four of his five targets for 42 yards and a touchdown. 
Ertz, two for two, 34 yards. Ertz, one star. Dallas Goddard, three and a half stars. What's your next matchup, man? I think Ertz got hurt. I don't think I mentioned that in the news. Uh, a little banged up. Okay. We don't win on weeks or anything yet confirmed. We'll get to it later. Nothing confirmed. Um, gotcha. Next matchup, Rams at Colts. Matthew Stafford was quarterback nine last week, went 20 of 26, three touchdowns and 321 yards. Uh, just a stud in an elite offense. I know the Colts are supposed to be a good defense, but they just played Andy Dalton. Uh, so it's kind of hard to tell. Uh, there were some other things that will come up in the in the Colts portion of the matchup. I'm going to give four stars to Stafford this week, bringing him solidly within the quarterback one discussion. Daryl Henderson, uh, Colts gave up 140 rushing yards. That was the eighth most last week uh, to Chris Carson uh, versus the Seahawks there. Uh, so I expect a nice day for Henderson here. Sony was not a threat at all in week one. Uh, Henderson played 49 of 52 snaps. That's 94% for Henderson. 3.75 stars as a high-end running back to Daryl Henderson. Cooper Cup seems to be the apple of Stafford's eye. Uh, I think me and Josh both feel pretty good about calling that. Um Colts were better versus the pass, but I think Stafford gets going a, a little early. Uh, f sorry, cut 49 out of 52 snaps, just like Henderson uh, for 94%. Uh, that was Wood. Robert Woods was 50. Uh, I'm sorry, 40 snaps out of 52, 77% for Robert Woods. Cup uh, demanded 10 targets. Uh, he was a wide receiver, 11 last week. Four targets for Woods, but he did score. Uh, two, uh, Van Jefferson caught two out of his three targets and he scored on a long throw for 67 yards. But again, I'm going to go with the volume. I'm going to go with the, uh, with the connection, uh, there, uh, 4.25 stars for Cooper cup. I'm going to give woods 3.25 stars. Uh, Van Jefferson is worth a pickup, maybe a flex or a bye week fill in, but I'm going to be cautious here with 2.5 stars for Van Jefferson. Really? Cause I, uh, I do expect Rams to still be able to do mm -hmm. some things here. Uh, Tyler okay. Higby, the tight end. Uh, Gerald Everett, uh, his old teammate, uh, played the Colts last week. Uh, he only got two targets his way, caught, well, caught them both, but he did score. Uh, you know, your typical tight end, uh, touchdown dependent tight end uh, that I guessed for week one, which was pure luck <laughs> that I had him in my lineup. Uh, Higby, Everett's ex teammate, as I just said, is more involved uh, than. Ever it is, and uh, has a pretty talented quarterback himself in Matthew Stafford's. Uh, Higby himself caught five out of six targets last week, uh, but no score. Uh, I'm going to make him a low end tight end one with 3.25 stars. On to the Colts. I'm going to bench Carson Wentz. I just, he's taking a lot of sacks. Uh, I don't see, you know, a lot of. Yeah. There's no reason to start him against this yeah, really exactly. good defense. Let's go on to the running backs. A little more to dissect here. Uh, Jonathan Taylor. Uh, Rams gave up 134 rushing yards to the Bears last week. Montgomery had mm -hmm. 108 of those six on 16 carries and one touchdown. Looked pretty darn good doing it, too. Uh, also, uh, both Colts backs uh, last week had a great target share. Uh, Taylor caught six of his seven targets, finished as RB16. Naheem Hines caught six of his eight targets to finish as RB21 in half-point PPR, may I remind you. So I think Taylor and Hines both are involved and have a nice day. I'm going to give four stars to Taylor, three and a half stars for Hines. On to the receivers. Uh, Michael Pittman, Paris Campbell, Zach Pascal. <laughs> How do you say Catch the guys? All. Yeah, yeah, that's what I end up saying. But I do want to mention with uh, Pascal, I mean, he did catch two touchdowns. Uh, but as long as nope. Winch is taking sacks and dumping the ball off to the backs, I'm benching all the Colts receivers. I'm not going to get caught chasing touchdowns with Zach Pascal. Uh, so bench, bench, bench rating for them all. And as usual, week to week, no tight ends of consequence for the Colts this year so far. That was it. Don't okay, matchup, let's dude. move on to the Houston Texans at the Cleveland Browns. Uh, let's start with Baker Mayfield here. I'm actually giving him four stars this week. Baker didn't throw a touchdown last week, but he did throw 321 yards against the um, the Kansas City Chiefs. If Odell is Odell Beckham is not playing this week, this just did. Odell Beckham, if, uh, as of news of two days ago, is not playing this week. He is not going to be yep. playing on Sunday. We did not mention that we in the news. That. Shame right. on us. Shame on me. <laughs> um, well, me too. Um, so ba uh, Odell is not playing this this week. So I'm going to bump Baker down to three and three quarter stars. I still have confidence that this um, this wide receiving core can get it done. And I'm Nick Chubb, five stars. 
I, I love Nick Chubb. I was big on Nick Chubb. Um, you know, yep. pre uh, preseason, have been on Nick Chubb ever since his rookie season. The Texans allowed the most rushing yards per game last year. Chubb did fumble one of last week against the Chiefs, which led to the Chiefs scoring the go-ahead touchdown. But and the very next time the Browns got the ball back, mm-hmm. sorry, after that go-ahead touchdown, the Browns got got the ball back. First play, hand off to Nick Chubb. They are not scared. They are Stavansky is not Bill Belichick who punishes running backs for simple mistakes. It's just, that's not what Nick Chubb does. So don't punish him for it. He's one of the best players, if not the best player on that offense, five stars, Kareem hunt, three stars. Did I mention the Texans were God awful against the run neck last season? Literally, (laughs) literally the worst. Mm -hmm. They gave up 160.3 rushing yards per game. Good Lord. Hunt only. Yeah, exactly. Hunt only had six carries last week, but did score a touchdown. He does get receiving work. If you have Kareem Hunt, put him in your lineup. It should probably more, be more like three and a half stars. I'm going to go three and a half stars. Odo Beckham, like I already said, out again this week. Hopefully, this is the last week that he's out. Um, I ended up with a lot of Odell Beckham on my fantasy teams. One, I was trying to avoid him, and he just kept falling and falling. I kind of want him to come back and see what happens here. Unfortunately, not this week. Mm-hmm. Jarvis Landry, the ball was spread around pretty evenly against the Chiefs. Like it was spread around really really well like it's like jarvis landry put some butter on some bread and he's spread it on out yeah like i think commercial. the play caller was kind of i think he was kind of feeling himself there i think he was kind of like we're gonna go here we're gonna go there <laughs> yeah ahead. especially without odell there yeah yep. landry should see an upt uh, uptick this week with odell beckham being out but and so i guess i'll give vanilla ice cream three and a half stars i don't know that's what i'm calling jarvis landry by the way david and joku nice. two and a half stars um, like I've already mentioned time and time again, he tied with or Oda Beckham is out and he did tie with Land, Jarvis Landry and, and, um, like fourth string wide receiver, Anthony Schwartz last week with five targets. He's a tight end dart throw. And that's, yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's that matchup, man. Nice. Wait a hold minute. on to your hold on to your butts, folks. We're going I, fast. You know what I didn't oh. do? I didn't do the Houston Texans side of the ball. No, you did not. I Sorry. Don't really care. <laughs> I mean, I wonder if I did that on purpose. Desperate. I usually leave myself a little note, be like, "Hey, um, no, don't care about anyone on this side of the ball." Hey, Chris, this just in off the news desk here over here. I don't, don't care about anyone in the Houston Texans. Not even Cooks. Not in this matchup, at least. <laughs> uh, good point. Onward. Yeah, good point. Okay, uh, hold on to your butts, folks. We're going fast. Uh, Bengals at Bears. I got quite a bit here, so I'm going to go quickly. <clears throat> Joe Burrow looked good. Uh, Bears gave up 312 yards, uh, which was the ninth worst last week to Stafford and the Rams. The Bengals looked good. Uh, Burrow looked nimble and in command of the offense. I'm going to give him a solid 3.5 stars. Onward to Mixon. Mm-hmm. Mixon played 54 of 69. Nice. Snaps, uh, 78%. Uh, but in those 69, I'm sorry, in those 54 snaps, 29 carries, 127 yards, one touchdown. He was the RB2 last week. Uh, caught all four of his targets. Nothing to sneeze at there. Uh, he's an RB1 until further notice as far as I'm concerned. However, the Bears only gave up 74 rushing yards to the Rams and Henderson. But again, uh, I'm going to look at Mixon as an RB1. I'm going to give him five stars here until he shows me different. Mm. Chase, Jamar Chase. Well, so much for that, huh? <laughs> Chase looked great. He caught uh, five of his seven targets for 101 yards with a 50-yard touchdown pass. He was wide receiver 14 last week. He played, here's a better number for you. He played 62 of 69 snaps, 90%. Both Higgins and, Boy- and Boyd played uh, 74% for context Higgins there. got He got a little banged up in that in that game. Fair. He came back. He, he went into the injury tent and came back out. But I'm just saying, like... Right. Well, I think we know. I, I all look three. for Tiggins to be out on the field a little bit more than that. Well, but we also understand that they're going to run about three receivers a lot. So maybe there was some running formations and Chase was the one they chose to put out there, whether it was sure. Tiggins or not. Yeah. Bears gave up 312 passing yards, which is nice worth. We're up. Oh, sorry. I already got that. Uh, remember, Cup had a really nice week last week. So I'm going to give four stars for Chase, who I believe to maybe be their number one this year on to Tiggins who we both feel very good about this year and I still do 
Uh, it's important to mention. Boyd seems like he's going to be the afterthought in this passing attack as, his, as Higgins scores and caught four of his five targets. Not to mention, I believe Boyd plays in the slot more. And I think the Rams yep. play uh, Ramsey uh, out of the slot to get him closer to the ball slash the line of scrimmage. So I'm going to give 3.25 stars for Tiggins and bench Boyd. Can I, interrupt, no Brett, can I interrupt you for a second? Yeah, go ahead. Um, Ramsey does not play in the slot. He moves all over the field to follow someone. Um, they said they said in that game uh, with Jalen Ramsey with the mm-hmm. Bears and, and the Rams is that he actually like because he used to just be like I play on one side of the field and then he went to the Rams mm-hmm. and he came in and said uh it, like they started moving around and he's like it was great I used to get bored on the outside because no one would throw to me yep yep I heard him say that yep I still would be interested to see how much they're playing him inside because it seems like a lot now it just depends to... on the matchup. Right, exactly. That's what I'd say. Teams like with a Kelsey or a Pitts or something, they might put him on there. Keep rolling. You were doing good. I had to interrupt. That's fine. Uh, We benched Boy. We got that out of the way. No tight ends of consequence for the Bengals. Uh, Andy Dalton and Justin slash Justin Fields. I like to put that every week. Uh, I'm not risking it. I'm going to bench them both, obviously. Uh, David Montgomery. Bengals only gave up 67 rushing yards, which was 61. Went to Dalvin Cook last week. Uh, but Cook was able to score on the round and haul in six catches. Uh, David, again, I mentioned it earlier, David Montgomery looked phenomenal. Uh, I'm not calling the Bengals a defense good, so I'm going to give three and a half stars, make uh, David Montgomery a mid to high RB2. Allen Robinson, uh, Jefferson, uh, I'm sorry, Justin Jefferson had quite a day versus these Bengals. What? Had a quiet day versus these Bengals last week, but he did have nine targets, uh, as did Robinson himself. Six out of 11 for 35 yards. That's not nine targets. Oh, he had a nice day himself. Robinson also had a whatever. That doesn't make any sense, folks. I apologize. Let's edit that out. Allen Robinson. Justin Jefferson had a quiet day versus these same Bengals last week, but he did garner nine targets. Uh, Robinson uh, caught six out of 11 targets for 35 yards, but uh, Thielen for the Bengals last week did have a really nice day, and obviously Robinson is the one for the Bears. I'm going to give four stars to Robinson. I'm not buying into this Bengals defense. Darnell Mooney had seven targets, so he should be involved. Yes, go ahead. Nope, nope, nope. I'm just kind of happy about Darnell Mooney. Oh, got it. Uh, Darnell Mooney did have seven targets, so he should be involved, and I'm holding out hope for a score here, Uh, but you have to keep in mind, I just, I think Robinson steals the show a little bit here. I'm going to give 2.5 stars and just barely keep Mooney in the flex conversation there for the week. Uh, Tight ends. This is... uh, Kind of exciting, kind of disappointing. We'll, we'll get into it here. Dis, a decent day for Komet in terms of involvement. Uh, he just didn't score, uh, so he ended up as the tight end 20 in week one. He played 51 of 64 snaps for 74%. Uh, yeah. So uh, you got to keep him in that outside of the top 12 tight end dart throw area. 2.75 stars for Cole Komet. And that what? is the Bengals at Bears. I, I think you're on something. You said that David Montgomery looked good. He didn't really. Um, and that Cole Komet is outside. I think you uh, say that every week. <laughs> I watched, I won't watch at least part of the game. And yeah, there were some runs. He looked good. And then there was something that he didn't. So like, mm-hmm. I'm just going to say like, he looked average, like he always does. Um, and Cole Komet with you, but that's okay. We don't have to agree. Right. Um, let's move along to the Las Vegas Raiders. Um, this is kind of like the Houston Texans. So it's going to go really quick. David, David Carr. He, you know, nope. Nope. Very and very good. Uh, very good finish to that that uh, Monday night football yeah, game. What a game! I loved it. It was great. But still, no, no. Josh Jacobs, he's a little banged up right now. Why don't we check back in on on Sunday for his his final status of, of the week two matchup? Kenyon Drake, I could care less. Um, you're kind of a, you know, like a you're like a a C running back, um, but not in a start. You're a one star. You're a bench. Wide receivers, one star for the lot of them. Um, I, I if it were if we were talking about bye weeks here, I would be more inclined to say Hunter Renfro. He he had a lot of usage and towards the end to the point where towards the end of the that um the Raiders uh, Ravens game mm-hmm. on Monday Night Football, they were actually like double covering Hunter Renfro. And that's yeah. how Ruggs yep. and Edwards and mm-hmm. even Zay Jones with that last minute Good observation. touchdown in thing. overtime. Like, of course they weren't covering Zay Jones. It's Zay Jones, you know? Um, I'm not starting any of these guys. Don't be fooled into it. 
if you wanted to hang on to like rugs just because he was like your your like complete flyer pick, sure. Darren Waller, he's Darren Waller, he's five stars. Let's yeah. move on to the Steelers here. Three stars for Big Ben. I didn't watch the entirety of the game last week, like I already said, but the Steelers offensive line did not look all that great against the Bills defensive front. Big Ben is not the quarterback of your where he could manipulate a collapsing pocket and maybe run around a little bit. He just didn't have a ton of time to throw. But And you know who benefited from that? Deontay Johnson, who gets a four-star rating here once again. Deontay Johnson had another game of 10 targets with from Big Ben. He only caught five of them for only 36 yards, but to get a touchdown to save his day. Uh, Johnson will face a very soft Raiders secondary, So it, and he did play in 76% of the snaps. That's Deontay Johnson. So I'm going to give him four stars. Not a lot of usage, but whatever. You know, played in 91% of the snaps for the, the Steelers. Juju, I'm giving him three and a half stars. Oh, nice. Just got okay. eight targets. Didn't, you know, did I believe he did score a touchdown. They were all short targets too, of course. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I'll give him, I'll give Juju three and a half stars against the, the Raiders. Chase Claypool, I, no, I have two stars written down here. I'm going to really just move it to one. Like, I'm, it it's could bench, easily, right? I mean, like, Chase Claypool, I guess, I guess I'm going to keep it at that two stars because it easily could be like, for some reason, you get down super big uh, because of the Thursday night football game, and you need a Hail Mary. Chase Claypool is a definite Hail Mary play there. He can end up with two touchdowns for like 120 knows, yards, yeah. like five catches or something. And run you know? one in. Yeah, yeah. Let's not forget about Najee Harris, though. The only running back in the NFL in week one to play in 100% of his team's offensive snaps. Mm-hmm. It's a good matchup for the rookie here. The Raiders were ninth worst against the run last season, and they they also gave up 90 yards to the Baltimore running back Scrubs on Monday Night Football. The problem with that line, the problem is that that line is not doing Najee Harris much favors. He averaged only 9.2 yards per attempt last week. Given the draft capital that you put into Harris, though, you're probably starting him regardless, but just don't expect the moon. Not the moon, Alice. So that was the Las Vegas Raiders and the Pittsburgh Steelers. What's your next matchup, Chris? Uh, I've got Saints at Panthers for our listeners at home. Jameis Winston. Uh, this must have been the lowest yardage total for a five-touchdown game ever in the history of everything ever. No, I'm just kidding. I think there has what been a couple it? others. He had 148. He was 14 of 20 and had 148 passing yards and five touchdowns. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Yeah, exactly. Your face says it all. Uh, I think okay. Jameis is one of the better streamers. If not firmly in the quarterback one discussion this week, um, I'm going to be cautiously optimistic and maybe he will be a QB one moving forward. If he can continue to start and play well, uh, keep talking with an inflection in your voice. (laughs) Panthers gave up uh, two scores to uh, rookie Zach Wilson last week in his debut, which in, you know, real life football terms is saying something for a rookie. Um, so I'm going to give four stars to Jameis here and his uh, new eyeballs. No, he didn't get actual new eyeballs. He just got LASIK, but you know, whatever. (laughs) Kamara, Kamara had a nice day last week. Uh, although only four targets, Uh, a little concerning there, but on the ground, uh, 20, uh, rushes for 83 yards and a receiving touchdown. Hey man, you look darn good. Yeah. I think just compliment the, the throwing court, the throwing quarterback complimented the quarterback. Well, uh, Panthers did only allow 45 rushing yards. Last week, that's second best because that's not very many I, I, at all. I got it. I got. I, I can't. I can't not stop you here. Do yeah. you think this went up to James Winston and was like, "That's a real nice helmet you got there." Yeah, maybe. You know, complimented him really well. Oh, <laughs> you got me. Um, but, Sorry, keep. Uh, I'm. I'm an idiot. Right, right. <laughs> uh, so again, the Panthers did only allow 45 rushing yards last week. That was second best, but it was versus a crappy Jets running back situation, and uh, mm-hmm. the Jets did lose Mackay Becton. May I remind you again? Uh, so I think Kamar ha- Kamar has a nice day, most likely. Uh, scores. Uh, let's give him four stars. Uh, Marquez oh, okay. Callaway. Uh, I just don't know which Saints wide receiver to trust, so I'm going to bench them all till further notice. Uh, doesn't mean drop Callaway it? yet, because um, again, I do no. like what Jame- Jameis is doing moving forward, but we'll see with this receiver core because it's confusing. Let's get to the tight ends. We touched on a little, little bit in this beginning segment about cause for concern. Uh, Juwan Johnson slash Adam Troutman. Um, Forgive me. Ryan Griffin, uh, the Jets uh, tight end last week versus this Panthers team. 
had six targets, uh, but nothing to write home about. Uh, but of course, the Saints, you do utilize their tight ends more. Unfortunately, they're kind of utilizing two, except that Troutman played 51 out of 60 snaps for, uh, for a great percentage there. Uh, it's just a matter of which one and in what spot on the field, I feel like. Uh, I'm a little worried about Jawan Johnson's red zone involvement. Um, so I'm going to give Troutman the benefit of the doubt and go with the usage here uh, and just barely get him in the tight end conversation because it was a disappointing yeah. week one with a two and a half star rating and i guess i wait and see with johnson in most redraft leagues with 12 teams i'm going to say wait and see with johnson pick them up if you're kind of tight end desperate or you're thinking about streaming a couple guys for the next few you got weeks a spare bench spot. there you go onward and upward to the other team the panthers uh sam darnold uh look decent uh in the little bit of action that i saw but i just don't think it's worth starting him in your single quarterback league so i'm going to bench him CMC, I mean, the Saints were dominant versus run, but we're talking about CMC here. So I'm going to I'm gonna uh, temper expectations a little bit and give him, oh, only a measly four stars <laughs> and make sure that he's still a quarter running back really? this week. Really? Only four? Yeah. I mean, I think that's still a just okay. inside the top 12. No, it's fine. No, no it's your matchup. Go Keep going. Uh, Saints were really good versus the run. Anyway, uh, DJ Moore. DJ Moore had the better day out of these uh, conglomeration of receivers here in Carolina. Uh, Caught six out of eight targets for 75 yards. Played 81% of snaps. We'd like to see that. Uh, Keep DJ in the flex conversation with three stars. Uh, Terrace Marshall, the rookie, quote, sensation, or whatever you want to call it, played 53% of the snaps. Nice debut, but I'm going to bench him in in, uh, fantasy. Robbie Anderson. Scored on a 57-yard bomb, but only had three targets. Uh, the act, exact name number of snaps is more, which, again, was 80 per, 81%. Um, I, there's a little bit of scuttlebutt about CMC's return, uh, kind of taking those underneath targets away from Anderson, and they don't really have a tight end of consequence. So I'm going to bench Anderson this week. As I said, no tight ends of consequence. That is the uh, Saints at Panthers. All right, we got the Tennessee Titans at the Seattle Seahawks next. I'm doubling down here, Chris. I gave Ryan Tannehill a pretty decent rating last week. I think it was three and three quarter stars. It might have even been four. I I looked it up earlier this week when after I wrote this and I forgot. Mm-hmm. I'm mm-hmm. giving him four stars. Maybe okay. again. I don't remember what I, I did hope he last week. You, your confidence. I hope he does. I really um, I, I have him in no league, so it doesn't matter. But I'm I'm confident, and I'm giving him four stars here. Um. You know, it, it's a softer defense. That this is a softer defense than the Cardinals. Russell Wilson looks like he's fired up the stove and and the oven, and because he was cooking up a seven course meal last week. And yeah. if Ryan Tannehill and the Titans want to keep up against Russell Wilson, they're going to have to throw. I really think they're going to have to throw. And so I'm giving Tannehill four stars. I know it's a lazy narrative, but it's a pretty solid modern day NFL narrative. On to Derek Henry. I'm giving him three and a half stars, unfortunately. If the Titans get down early, Henry could have another clunker of a game. He rushed for 17, only 17 times and 58 yards last week. And that mm-hmm. is a low 3.4. That is actually 0.3 yards above a Melvin Gordon special. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> Sounds like uh, on to A.J. Brown. If Tannehill is getting four, I'm giving A.J. Brown four and a quarter. Tannehill, I really think he's going to have to throw. The the Titans secondary is not very good, and I think Russell Wilson could eat them alive. So therefore, A.J. Brown, four and a quarter stars. Three stars for Julio. He did garner six targets last week. He only caught three of them for the low, low, low 29 low. yards. I am hoping for a better performance from Julio this week. If not this week, let's start putting our finger on that pulse of the cause for concern. Mm-hmm. For Julio, mm-hmm. nothing. I, I I'm not going to mention Ferkser again, other than I literally just said his name. So I'm never going to say Ferkser again. I, other than that, right there, I'm not <laughs> going to say Anthony Ferkser or right there, I'm not going to say his name again. Ferkser, do get it again. It. Uh, on to, let's go on Russell Wilson. Five stars again. Look for All Russell right. Wilson to continue serving up that seven course meal that I mentioned before. For the Titans D that gave up, that yeah, just gave up a... 289 yards and four touchdowns to Kyler last week. And Kyler also ran on the ground too, which ran Russell Wilson yep. can, hasn't been doing a lot as of late, but can can certainly do so, keep doing so. Um, I have Chris Carson down for three and a half stars. I think that's going to 
I wanted to bump it up with the um, Rashad Penny news that he's probably not going to play this week. Mm. If Russ is going to continue to cook, that usually means that Carson Carson's fantasy value takes a bit of a hit. The one thing that Carson has going yeah. for him, like I said already, is that Penny is dealing with that hamstring issue. And it's potentially going to keep him out for a week. So I don't think he's supposed to play this week. I'm just, I'm not, so. like when I wrote this and even when I was looking at it before the show, I'm really not quite sure about Penny. We didn't mention it in the news section because we're, it's a lot of gray area there. And he's kind of a backup too, in fantasy terms. He's definitely the backup to, to Carson. Terms. But still, yeah. if the backup's gone, then the car, then the, usually the, the, the primary back gets more work. DK Metcalf. Four and a half stars. Fun fact about DK Metcalf. Did you know that DK and Lockett both had only five targets last week? Lockett just happened to be the one that scored two touchdowns. DK also had one, though. So let's roll Metcalf out there with the utmost confidence. Like I said, four and a half stars. Nice, nice, nice. Um, Tyler Lockett, I I know you as a Lockett manager are probably itching to get him back out there in your starting lineup. The three stars suggest you can, but I think you really need to set yourself up for disappointment with that. This is what Lockett does. He comes out, he has a boom game, and then he disappears for several games until his next boom game. Three stars, though, just, just in case he does again. And, you know, he'll probably get some points, but not a lot. Uh, Gerald Everett, I'm giving him one star. He caught a touchdown last week. He looked good on it. He was on the field for 72% of the snaps. That's good. That's not bad. To put that into context, though, there were 16 other tight ends in the NFL with a higher snap percentage than Gerald Everett. You know who also yeah, was, was also horrible. on the field for 70% the, of the Seahawks offensive snaps? Will Disley, the formerly yep. retired Will Disley. If Everett yeah. had more than two targets in week one, I'd be a lot more confident in starting him. But until then, nope. What's what's what you got next there, buddy? I have got the. I'm gonna jump ahead, save my shorter matchup for later, and I'm gonna give you the maybe one of the premium matchups of the week here: Cowboys at Chargers. It's, not a, it's Deck, only a premium matchup because you're a Cowboys fan. That's not true at all, and you know. It. I know. I just wanted. To, I, just wanted to say <laughs> I was like, wait a gosh darn minute. Um, <laughs> I think Dak sees enough volume here to remain a quarterback one. Um, but we'll get into it a little bit later. I think we're going to see a skew a little heavier run this uh, this week uh, as opposed to what we saw oh. from Dallas last week. Uh, although I think he'll be handing off and dumping off quite a bit. I think he's still a QB1 this week. Four stars. Let's get into Zeke. I think the pass heavy pass heavy game plan worked against Zeke's favor last week. Uh, forgive me. I think Dak was attempting to neutralize that Tampa front and it worked. Uh, Zeke still played 83% of snaps. Uh, there was 58 passing attempts to be had there. So again, they threw a ton. There was, yeah. uh, Kellen Moore was on record saying there was 28 run plays called and Dak audibled out of 12 of them. Wisely audibled, uh, audibled out of 12 of them. I am not one of these dudes who are going to just pound the table and say, establish the run, run the dang ball. Cause it's just, it's 2021 folks. This was the right game plan to have, and I think it kept them in the game. They just came up short. The game plan won't be that every week. Uh, if people want to temper their expectations and start calling a low-end running back one week in and week out, I'm okay with that, but uh, we'll wait and see. Uh, Chargers gave up the ninth fewest fantasy points to running backs. Nothing to sneeze at there last week. Uh, Chargers gave up the fewest passing yards in week one. That'll play into what we see from the receivers and, of course, Zeke through the air. I think this team can be run on, and Dallas looks to restore some semblance of balance to the offense. The game plan dictates Zeke has a bounce back game. Four stars for Ezekiel Elliott. Pollard's worth a quick mention here. He caught all four of his targets for 29 yards and added three carries for 14, but he's just maybe he's one of the best handcuffs in the league right now, and he usually does have some standalone value, but he's on your bench for until further notice. Amari, uh, given that I expect a more run-heavy approach for Dallas, Amari is, look, is still looking like an uh, I'm sorry. I do expect a more run-heavy approach from Dallas, but Amari is looking like an elite-level talent uh, this season, uh, uh, albeit after only one week. I think Amari still gets his looks, and his talent is undeniable right now. Uh, Amari uh, played 89% of snaps last week. CD played 73%. Worth mentioning, Gallup played 60%. Of course, he got hurt. Uh, along with his route running, uh, he's still a high-end wide receiver one, Amari, that is. Uh, I'm sorry. 
Wide receiver one, high end two territory, 3.75 stars. So a little, uh, what's the term? Conservative there. Uh, on to CD. Uh, volume wise, I don't think CD scores here uh, in, in, in this one, but he's definitely got to still be a wide receiver three and a flex. Uh, may I remind you, the Chargers have had a lot of changes on defense. They have Derwin James back this year. Uh, Chris Harris Jr. mans the slot. I feel like CD still plays a fair bit of slot. So I'm tempering expectations here and giving him three stars. I think that's saying something with the CD, like still saying tempering expectations and still giving me three stars means it's still the Dallas offense. I'm going to bench uh, Cedric Wilson. Um, I, although don't get me wrong. He is a very adequate backup, uh, both in real life and a little bit in fantasy. You just have to pick your matchups there and we're not into bye week yet. So, uh, Let's just hope you don't have to play Sedge Quilson. I'm going to bench him. On to the tight ends. A little bit more to talk about here uh, with uh, Jarwin and Schultz. Uh, I think we might be looking at a two-headed monster. Uh, Schultz caught six of six targets, 45 yards. Jarwin caught three of three for 20 yards. There's a possibility we see a boon in the targets for the tight ends in Gallup. Gallup's absence, going back to the Cedric Wilson discussion there. Uh, and, and I'm also predicting a run-heavy approach here, so I'm kind of thinking it's a two-tight-end set kind of game. Uh, maybe uh, there's also a reality where they defer to Jarwin more moving forward because of the absence of Gallup. Maybe they trust Jarwin the most out of those three, those three being Jarwin, Schultz, and Wilson. But uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be uh, cautious with it because, you know, I just think it's week two and that's what you do. So I think I they're think both going to be on one of them. Uh, yeah. So I think they're both on the field. I think Dallas uses them more. I think um, Schultz showed last year he can win his matchups and play as a tight end one in this offense. But I'm benching them both this week in this week's matchup and moving forward. We're just going to have to wait and see. But uh, I'm kind of leaning the way Josh is. On to the Chargers. Herbie, uh, Herbert, Justin Herbert gave up, I'm sorry, Dallas gave up uh, 379 yards last week. That was the third most passing yards. Uh, Herbert was the quarterback 26 last week, but he looked good doing it. Uh, now they will be without Demarcus Lawrence, as we mentioned in the top of the show, uh, and Randy Gregory to COVID. We did not mention that uh, at the top of the show. So that's your two starting defensive ends gone. And even their defensive line coach, Leon Lett, who used to play for him, was carted off. Something about it, something came up with his leg or something. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, right. Not that he was playing the middle of the defense, folks. I just thought that was funny. Um, best of luck to you, Leon Lett. Uh, Herbie is on an elite level right now, and I'm going to take advantage against this Dallas defense. Five stars. On to Eckler, Austin Eckler. I am optimistic. We see a concerted effort to get Eckler the ball in space and particularly through the air and versus his suspect Dallas defense. He did have zero targets in week one, but Dallas gives up the six fewest, I'm sorry, Dallas did give up the six fewest fantasy points to backs to running backs last week. But don't let that fool you. It's an aberration. I think uh, we see Eckler get on track here. This Dallas defense is starting to look as bad as they did last year. Uh, injuries and everything just playing into it. This game is, uh, this game versus the elite office could tell us that much this week if we see a very bad Dallas defense for most of the year again. Uh, Eckler is a low, AR, low end RB1 this week for me. Give him four stars. Just a mention of, I'm sorry, what's his name? Larry Roundtree, right? Is it Larry? No D, Roundtree. Uh, well, I, yeah, I thought I said that right, but the first name I was questioning. Uh, maybe in a very deep league, if you're desperate, you take a chance on him falling into the end zone on a red zone, on a nah. goal line carry. Uh, two stars. Deepest of leagues. Uh, Keenan Allen, uh, Trevon Diggs, the premier corner for the Dallas Cowboys, uh, speaking about their passing defense. Uh, PFF uh, last week gave him a 65.5 rating. That's 33rd. That's not the end of the world, but it's not good either. Uh, not So it's not awful. But again, this Dallas defense is trending in the wrong direction. I think the Chargers make a concerted effort to put the league on notice that their offense is among the league's best. Uh, and Dallas won't be able to slow them down. Uh, it, it's kind of one of those get right games, I guess you could call it. it. Not that they were wrong in week one. They just were a little not high on the points, not high on the fantasy points. So we're going to see a target monster here in Keenan Allen, five stars. Mike Williams had a great game. Um, what, is it Jesse Palmer? Justin. It's Justin, isn't it? Why didn't I write it down? Palmer, the, I believe, third wide receiver for the Chargers. Josh Palmer. <laughs> Thank you. Josh Palmer is looking like an afterthought in this offense, and I believe we see targets uh, go Eckler's way, so I just don't think there's enough for him to do anything. He's probably bench, if not 
not on anybody's roster at this point. Uh, Williams. Well, my uh, roster. Yeah, Mike Williams stuffed the stat sheet, and until further notice, he needs to be in the wide receiver flex category at least, I think. Uh, uh, 3.25 stars for Williams this week. I wasn't making him a wide receiver two or one or anything. Just put him in the flex conversation. I think he's a pickup and stash, but go keep going. Mm, We'll see. I've seen this from, I've seen the Mike Williams story before. Well, maybe this week will prove me wrong, but uh, I I, I was on your side. I hope it proves me wrong. Let's put it that way. Yeah, there you go. That's kind of how I feel. I mean, uh, and then let's talk about Jerry Cooker. I mean, Gronk just tore this Dallas, uh, these Dallas linebackers and safeties up. We might see Micah Parsons more, but it won't matter. Uh, plus, Cook has burned them before when he was with the Packers. So I'm going to give uh, Jerry Cook a tight end one rating of 3.75 stars. That is your Cowboys at Chargers. Okay, Wait. before I go into my yeah. next matchup, and I know we're running long, but I'm going to bring this up anyways. Mm-hmm. When you said... I think that Dallas is putting the league on notice for uh, that they are premier offense in this league. I thought you said defense, and I was about ready to be like, "Dude, oh, the Dallas defense? What, I really? Multiple. Like, like, okay, get, like you don't live in Texas and haven't for a long time." And then I was like, "Oh, he said offense." Okay, mm-hmm. I actually yeah, I stopped I said... my mouth from actually opening and saying something dumb for once. Um. Uh, speaking of opening my mouth and saying something dumb, on to the Minnesota Vikings at the Arizona Cardinals. Going with the going with the visitors, of course, and that's Kirk Cousins. I'm I, it's two weeks in a row. I know that the Cardinals defense was great last week, but I'm I'm doubling down on Kirk Cousins here as well. Four stars for Cousins. He scored 22.04 fantasy points last week, which made him only the quarterback 13. But with 22 points, I'm pretty happy with that for a guy that you were getting in like the 13th, 14th round of your uh, of your league. So I'm rolling out Cousins for a second week, and with a with a really high end potential. Back I know that the Cardinals kind of shut down Tannehill a little bit, mm-hmm. but I really like I really like this entire like Vikings offense, and their defense is bad enough that they're going to probably have to keep throwing and running and do whatever they can to keep up with the Cardinals here. So I am going to roll with Kirk Cousins. Once again, as a four-star rating. On to Dalvin Cook, I'm giving him four and a quarter. The Cards more or less held the entire Titans offense in check last season, like I just included, uh, just said. But And that even includes the Mountain, Den- Derrick Henry. I'm not saying that Cook is better than Derrick Henry. He's just a different skill set. He pa- catches passes and everything. What I am saying is that I'm not sure that the Cardinals defense can contain two top end running backs in a row, two weeks in a row. Um, I'm going to start with Adam Thielen here. I'm giving him three and three quarters stars. Uh, Last week, it was definitely the Adam Thielen show. Justin Jefferson was not necessarily an afterthought, but if you looked at the stats, he certainly was. Um, Thielen was a wide receiver for last week. He ranked, he racked up 5.7 points, which I like that. And I know that Adam Thielen and Justin Jefferson has exhibited last year a couple of times that they can both be very fantasy relevant wide receivers in the same week. I'm going to give the edge to Jeff- Justin Jefferson, who I'm giving four and a quarter stars to. Even though Jefferson put up a clunker that last week, I think you can start him again this week with some confidence. Chris, I have a question for you. Yes, what is your question? Am I a Kyler Murray fan now? He is the picture yeah. in my thumbnail this week. I am giving him, oh, once sweet. again, two weeks in a row, five stars. Five stars. Am I a Kyler Murray fan now? I think so. I think, uh-huh. yeah, I think you're jumping on the wagon with me. I, I'm not on the wagon. No, I don't like him. I think he's small. I think he's going to get hurt. I just, I, I'm giving him five stars, and I'm doing, I'm doing it again. This passing defense for the Vikings is not good. I don't nope. think that their front four can get pressure on Kyler. I just don't see how they can contain him. I really don't. So for two weeks in a row, Chris, five oh. stars for the guy that I was oh. throwing the utmost shade upon last season. Oh, two weeks, Josh. Two weeks, Josh. Do you want to know who they play next week? I don't remember who it is, but it's a really good matchup again. The I Jacksonville looked. Jaguars. I know. I'm just like, <laughs> dude, if you drafted dude, Kyler he's Murray, so I was money just right like, now. Oh, exactly. No. He's that one. All that right, you, let's. I'm sorry, real quick. He's that one that even us late QB guys are like, I don't know, the sixth round. Maybe, I gotta pull the freaking I trigger. Draft him in like the fifth, you know? Oh man, big fan. I'm that, a huge fan. That running back four could have just been Kyler Murray. 
Uh, um, you you have one matchup left. I'm not done that. yet. Oh, my apologies. My bad. On to Jumping Chase Edmonds. My I'm bad. giving him three and a half <laughs> stars, and maybe it should be more. Last week, Edmonds and Connors uh, had a fairly even split on usage and as far as running the ball and production on the ground. Where the differences do come in, though, is that Edmonds got work through the air. He went 4 for 4 for 44 y- 43 yards. It would have been great if it was 44. Just couldn't get that extra one, Edmonds. Come on. I mean, 4 for 4 for 44 yeah, right. sounds a lot better than 43. Edmonds was also on the field for 58% of the snaps versus Connors 49%. So not much of a difference there, but... And my only problem is that for at least week one that they were playing, their playing time was a little too similar. I would like that to increase a little bit more, but who knows? Chase Edmonds, three and a half stars, James Conner, two. On to Nuke, or also known as Deon- his um, government name, DeAndre Hopkins. We're giving him four and three quarter stars. Nuke finished as wide receiver seven last week. It's another juicy matchup against the Vikings. Not going to dwell on the elite player that DeAndre Hopkins is. Christian Kirk, I'm only bringing this up because of what he did last week. Do you know who the wide receiver eight was last week, Chris? Adam Thielen. I don't know. I probably should have guessed in context. Christian of the Kirk. <laughs> Christian Kirk was the wide receiver eight last week. If you'd have told me a week ago that the kind of production Christian Kirk mm-hmm. was going to put up, I would have asked you if you got hit on the head, dude. Like, for reals. I would never have seen this coming. Kirk went 5-for-5 five for, five for 70 yards, two touchdowns. The problem with that is that Kirk was on the field for only 57% of the snaps. He was out-snapped by A.J. Green, who did next to nothing. For this reason, and this reason only, I am going to give Kirk two and three-quarter stars. Um, if you're if you're weak at wide receiver, Kirk is one to, to target, but that snap percentage is not that great. Do you know who had an even lower snap percentage? Rondale Moore, and yet he had a pretty good, decent day, too. Yeah. He was at, like, 19%. It was ridiculous. But he was a wide receiver four in that game. So that, or I think when he's out the there, they drop game, stuff. So. I think when he's out there, they drop stuff for him. Yeah. One one matchup left, right? Me, yes. Do you have one Let's left? get it done. Are you done? Yep. Cool. Uh, Falcons and Buccaneers. I'm going to try to breach the Falcons quickly because we've got some not good stuff Uh, i'm gonna go and bench matt ryan the falcons are 12.5 underdogs uh by vegas standards that's that's a lot folks i'm not a betting man (laughs) that is a lot that is a butt ton (laughs) that is like that's matt ryan's fault that you know insulting no i'm just mentioning it at the top of the matchup i'm gonna go and bench ryan because of some of these reasons mike davis you got to keep him into consideration uh hope for some catches hope for the falcons playing from behind and racking up ppr points uh he played 65 percent of snaps last week i'm gonna give him a flex worthy three stars yep, i'm sorry ahead. we're talking about mike davis playing against the bucks at run defense and you're gonna give him three stars i wouldn't start you i don't know if you could pay me enough to start him this week really uh yeah i, mean, I could i could i could be convinced to temper a little at 2.75 stars but i mean i think he's still in conversation wow. yeah i think it's gonna be started really yeah i mean z- Targets? Okay, um, I think it's gonna ice cream targets. bar bet here. Where's my Where's my pad? So just straight up start worthy. So top thirty six. Is that fair? Mm, I want to go like top thirty. I'm no, I'm not taking that bet because I called him a I called him a flex worthy. Well, to be fair, to be fair, I said three stars. So that's I've done two point seven five stars for low end flexes. I okay, feel yeah, fine. Your top star 30. rating is fine. Top thirty. To fine. Top thirty. That's okay. Fine, top 30. Well, we could iron that out, but that's neither here nor there. That, that's behind the scenes stuff. Mike Davis, keep going. Mike Davis, Chris says top 30. I say top 50. And when I say three stars, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, keep going. Word keep to going, Calvin man. Ridley. Uh, you know, despite the matchup, I think you have to keep Ridley in the wide receiver two conversation. Uh, as Josh mentioned, they're really good against the run. Cowboys just carved him up pretty good through the air. Uh, not loving this Falcons. Offense, but keep Ridley in the wide receiver two conversation with 3.25 stars. Uh, Gage, Justin, in it, Justin Gage. What's it with Justin and Josh? I just can't get right. Bench uh, droppable is actually what I have here for my notes. Yeah, I said droppable uh, for Russell Gage. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, Pitts, uh, just barely startable with 2.5 stars. He only played 68% of snaps. We've already kind of been over it. Uh, Again, we've got our 
we've got our concern up for this Falcons offense. At least I do. Uh, Matt, Matt Ryan and the and company. On to the Buccaneers. Uh, I mean, again, it's going to be a great matchup. Let's give the GOAT four stars to get him in your, probably in your starting lineup. Uh, I'm going to bench all the running backs, though, because I don't know which one to pick. And uh, Bruce Arians is a SOB as far as running backs go in fantasy football. I, I know that's not astute analysis, folks, but I'm going to stick with it. Let's talk about what we care about a little bit more with Tampa and their receivers. Uh, may I remind you that Chris Godwin was, what, the wide receiver 14? Oh, no, wide receiver 13 in half-point PPR last week. Caught nine of his 14 targets and 105 yards and a touchdown. Uh, we already kind of touched, I well, no, I guess not this week. Um, you know, Evans was kind of what I've been calling him, kind of a compiler, kind of a big guy in a red zone threat. But we've got, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't give uh, stars for Godwin's. Uh, four and a half stars for Godwin. For Mike Evans, I'm going to go three stars to get him in the flex territory, even though we felt bad kind of about it. He's going to score some touchdowns probably this week. Some touchdowns. A touchdown or two. Uh, and, you know, more of the same story with Brown. Actually, I'm going to give Brown three and a half stars. Get all these pass catchers in the conversation because this is a really, really bad Falcons defense. There's like three f- f- defenses that come to mind that are probably going to be targetable for the rest of the year. Detroit, Atlanta, and Jaguars. Like, it's bad, folks. On to the tight end. Uh, Gronk, I'm going to give him four stars. Falcons gave up six catches for 76, one, 76 yards and one touchdown to the combination of Zach Ertz and Goddard last week. Gronk should get most of that work. Four stars again. And that is your Falcons and Buccaneers. I got to say in that Thursday night football game from what I did see, Mm-hmm. Um, granted, because we record on Thursdays, um, I saw the beginning and the end. Um, I didn't I see the meat either. of the game really, uh, but Gronk actually looked he looked okay, like he didn't look like he was like what 33 and just like a lumbering big dude, like he well, looked he like ke- he had uh, some pep in his step, you know, yeah, some, ke- some, um, some vim to his vigor. He was key in the uh, in the comeback drive, c- catching balls underneath and just turn up the field quickly and getting that frame moving up field quicker than I feel like I've seen in the past uh, couple of years. He looked good. Sorry, I turned on the I turned on the game. So um, that was your last matchup, right? That was it. Let's r- finish this mother out with the Kansas City Chiefs at the Baltimore Ravens. Not a lot to talk about here. Patrick Mahomes, he's Pat Mahomes. He's five stars, of course. Not of course, but I guess a Ravens defense that gave up 409 passing yards to Derek Carr. Granted, about like 50 or so of them was in overtime. That's how you had some overtime, yep. They did have some overtime, and a significant amount of overtime, actually. But, I mean, that's Derek Carr, dude. And, And this Ravens defense is a little banged up, and they just lost another... Um, well, that was their offensive lineman that they lost to. So, I mean, like, it's a banged up defense. Um, two and a half stars. Here's another guy that we forgot to mention in, in cause for concern segment. DH mm-hmm. managed only 8.75 fantasy points against the Browns when, in a game where the Chiefs were leading at points, you know? Mm-hmm. The Ravens only gave up 34 rushing yards to Josh Jacobs last week. Jacobs did score two touchdowns, which I'm not counting because I don't really care. I, I'm just, Josh Jacobs is just so, like, look at his name. It's Josh Jacobs. Yep, I'm calling my name lame. Um, My first name, that is. It's just like, it's just so lame. So I'm not counting on CH for, for all that. I, I'm All that is just like, as far as fantasy points, I'm getting a little scared that I was wrong on CH, man. I'm a little scared, Ditto. and now I'm a little glad that I ha- didn't really have much of an opportunity to ever draft CEH in all these fantasy drafts that we did this past off season. I'm giving him two and a half stars here. I'm legit concerned. What What do you think? Just a quick take on CEH. What do you think about him? I think I ended up with him in uh, one league because of our our kind of ranking, kind of where we had him. I think there was some mm-hmm. positivity there. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not as concerned as you right now. But it's in okay. the back of my brain. Better days ahead. I got gotcha. you. Mm-hmm. Um, on to Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey. See Patrick Mahomes. He's great. They're great. Five stars, of course. I, and I'm just like, I'm so like, 
Oh, it's so boring. I'm giving him five stars. I'm going to write up like an entire page on a Chiefs matchup one of these weeks, I swear. (laughs) I'm just going to go to town. Just to make up for the fact that I do (laughs) like zero analysis. I'm just like, dude, it's it's the... Now we have seven weeks of data. And it's like Mahomes is. Still I, I did. Really I did good. a lot of. I did look I at know. a lot of stuff. It wasn't just like, oh, it's David Kill. You know, five stars. Those Travis. Kill. No, I looked at stuff. And I'm like, yeah, like it's fine. I mean, yep. Darren Waller was great against the the Ravens on Monday Night Football. Oh man, Travis Kelsey is 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 He's as great, if not greater, than Darren Waller. So yep. you know, five stars. Lamar mm-hmm. Jackson, four stars. Lamar is always good for those rushing yards, as I mentioned even last week. Or on the Sunday stream, actually. Um, right. I was mildly impressed with Lamar in the first half of that game on Monday Night Football. I actually watched a, a fair amount of it. I really did. I actually got out of work early enough to watch the, the, a really about 80% of the game. Um, but then the second half rolled around and Lamar Jackson started looking like his old self, missing throws. He fumbled a couple of times, which, boy, oh, boy, that really cost him the game. Well, that, and, that second, yeah, that fumble cost him the game. The second one, yeah. Um, I mean, you can even argue that the the first one like got the Raiders into the, that tied the game. You know, like mm-hmm. um, Lamar Jackson really needs a an alpha receiver. I'm giving Marquise Brown, who is currently at the moment been in missing practice. I'm giving him two and a quarter stars. The Ravens will probably have to throw to keep up with the Chiefs, and the Browns did have. Or uh, I'm sorry, the Browns. Marquise Brown did have some good plays against the Raiders. He really did. Once again, it's the Raiders. Start him if you're desperate for some reason. Like I might be in Dynasty. But mm-hmm. uh, yeah, let's move on to Mark Andrews. Four and a quarter stars. He was targeted only five times. Not very really good. But he did mm-hmm. catch three of them for 20 yards. I just... Last week, Kansas City did give up 9.2 fantasy points per or I'm sorry, last season they did give up fantasy of 9.2 fantasy points per game and they gave up 12 points to the Browns tight ends last week. So, you know, Mark Andrews, four and a quarter stars, man. I, I kind of like him this week. I really do. Yeah. On to Tyson Williams. I mean, there's just been a lot of talk about him rotating in and out and everything. He had, he had a free, he had a pretty good first half, but then it was Latavius Murray in the second, mainly Latavius Murray in the second half. Whether that was game plan or not, I don't know. Um, I Can just I, I have a bunch quick. of other stuff written uh, written up about this. Uh, uh, the only thing that really kind of impresses me is that the Chiefs mm-hmm. did give up 153 rushing yards to the Browns backs. That's a good point. Cream Hunt, Nick Chubb. So there's there's a chance for Tyson Williams here. I can, I don't think I that he's on par with Cream Hunt or Nick Chubb. So kind of I have him at three stars, and actually, like I had a whole spiel okay. about giving him 3.6 stars. I'm actually bumping him down to like two and three quarter stars. I'm get, I'm can, bumping him down just a little notch. Can I give you two cents on Tyson real quick? Um, Have at it. We're running long already. Why not? He was the uh, he blew the block that caused Lamar t- to fumble that second time. I'm not saying Lamar shouldn't still hold on to that ball, but it was a blindside, right handed thing. I wonder if that's why they're it, char- it, they're it, like I saw maybe it. we I shouldn't saw be it. throwing Tyson out there. I saw it happen. I was like, ooh, he probably shouldn't have been in on that. Go ahead. That, that's, that's it man that's the matchup oh, you were that's, finished? that's the oh, show perfect. great that's everything um any other thoughts or, or or causes for concern other than um i don't know uh i got nothing join us on sunday i, I got nothing else either subscribe I, I, share like I guess for weekly show. content um so yeah let's just do this let's do a, a proper thing here <laughs> um thanks for tuning in everyone we really appreciate it um if you are watching on youtube you can always check us out in podcast format where wendy um she is uh distributing podcasts behind your local wendy's not the good wendy's but the other one on the other side of town which is not the Ooh. good wendy's oddly enough that wendy is distributing behind wendy's um but yeah, if you want to pick us up a podcast format, we're available wherever podcasts are sold, given up for free. Um, anyways, it's a free podcast. Pick it up. If you're watching a podcast format, you can always check us out on YouTube. Uh, just go to YouTube and search Amazing Fantasy Football. We are there. Sunday streams, we do an injury slash, you know, kind of like Sunday morning hangout with you, the the audience, and and ourselves. Um, we have some coffee. We take um, lineups, um, questions, you know, this, that. There's some asking for a friend. 
I quiz Chris on superhero um, uh, aliases. And I He's terrible at it, by the way. He is gone awful. Well, um, he also doesn't go with like mainstream stuff at all. But anyway, <laughs> any casual comics fans should know these. Um, Jake Garrett, come on, dude. That's the original Flash. That's that's a pretty easy one. Like that's a that's a softball right there. I never read DC. Uh, anyways, <laughs> what what else we do on the stream is we do the Monday we do the Monday night matchup, and like I said, some last minute injury news as much as we can suss out until then until then on the sunday stream which i i'm sorry we start at 10 a.m eastern or central central 10 a.m central we start at 10 a.m central if you live elsewhere other than the central time zone you do the math and figure it out because we don't know where you live we really do until next time folks peace later